This is the fourth and final tutorial of Functional Harmony, the basics. In this tutorial I'm just going to talk about the relationship between chords and the idea is that you'll have an idea of how chord sequences work. Obviously it's just the basics, so we're just dealing with diatonic chords and diatonic means in the key of, so no extra sharps which we call accidentals and um, no, um, yeah, no accidental. So in the last tutorial I was talking about how the chords are named um, tonic and subdominant and dominant and stuff and one of the strong pulls was, was between the dominant and the tonic so that was chord five and chord one and we also added a seventh so that became a dominant seventh resolving to chord one. In this tutorial, I'm going to go on to have additional chords. So the chord I'm going to put before chord five is chord two, and that would be a D minor chord if we're in C. So this is the chord two, going to chord five, going to chord one. If we add sevenths, it sounds a little bit more jazzy. Sequence 251 is probably the most common sequence in a jazz standard and there's a very strong pull from chord 2 to chord 5. If you look at the relationship between chord 5 and chord 2, notice that there are they are a fifth apart. So here is the chord, here is the note G and here is the note D. So D is five notes higher um, than G and then G is five, note higher, five notes higher than C. So I've constantly been talking about the how uh, notes of fifth apart have a very strong pull. We talked about the physics of that, I think, in tutorial two. So going to five, one, feels very, very natural. And where would you see the sequence in a jazz standard? Probably at the end of a sequence. Um, uh, you could see it at the end of a phrase. You can sometimes start to see fra uh, chord sequences that don't resolve. So you'll get chord two followed by chord five. So it's just good to be aware of, of those the sounds of those chords and also uh, the function of those chords. A chord that could precede chord two could be a chord that's five notes higher than that. So that would be the note A. So you go A, D, G, C. And the effect of that would be, I'm going to play it with raw, raw chords, not nice voicings. They're all in the key of C. I'll play it again with some nicer voicings, better voice leading. So we started on A. That's a, a very popular sequence in one of the tunes that I'm going to look at in future tu tutorials, which is Fly Me to the Moon. I'm going to play the same sequence in F just to show you that uh, how to transpose it. So in the key of F, chord, um, chord 6 is a D minor chord. Chord 2 is a G minor chord. Chord 5 is a C major chord. If I had the 7th, it's got a C7. And F is chord 1. So that would sound like this. If we then went one step further, we could then go another fifth above that. So I'm going to go back to the, to the key of C and that would be chord three. So we go three, six, two, five, one. And that would sound like this. Three, six, two, five, one. And if I did that in the key of F, chord three would be A minor, so it'd be A minor, D minor, that's chord six. Two is a G minor chord. Five is a C7 chord. I've actually added a ninth there. F major seven. So 
three, six, two, five, one, very common in jazz, very common in lots of other kinds of music as well. In future tutorials, I'd like to talk about how changing some of those chords makes the pull even stronger and it does take it out of the key so they therefore would not be diatonic chords but they kind of fit in that sequence so it's quite interesting but at the moment I was just going to stick to the diatonic chords of a key and the relevance of that in terms of improvising is that when you're reading a tune and looking at the chords and then you improvise, you need to work out what key you're in. So if you can recognize the relationships between chords, then it helps you find the, the, the relevant scale or the phrases that you may have learnt to fit that particular key. It's like deciphering a code. And once you've deciphered that, that and open that door, you suddenly have a world of um, where you can improvise much more freely. So it's really, really good practice to understand harmony and that's the end of functional harmony the basics tutorial 4